If you're new to DaVinci Resolve Studio altogether, or still adjusting after recently adding the speed editor into your established workflow, there are a few keys you want to make sure you're using to get the most out of your Blackmagic accessory. Let's break it down. Hey everyone, it's Candy again here at Retroviolet Studios with another video on DaVinci Resolve. If you don't already have a speed editor, you can find a link to buy one down in the description. You'll also find the link tree to our socials, one-time donation links, Retroviolet merch, and our Patreon, where you can pledge monthly support for access to extra content. The DaVinci Resolve Speed Editor by Blackmagic Design is a really incredible tool, and for something so small, it has a ton of functionality, with some keys able to do three or more different things depending on how they're interacted with. If you're new to the Resolve software or aren't used to using your speed editor yet, it might be a little overwhelming at first trying to figure out everything it can do to maximize your workflow. So let's get started. Undo. I'm sure we can all agree that the ability to quickly undo mistakes is crucial in any program, especially when trying to make a deadline. By double tapping the escape key, users can keep their hands on the editor while taking a step back in their work. Keep in mind that when undoing multiple consecutive actions, a tiny pause is necessary between double taps. Otherwise, the first undo will work and the rest won't register properly. In, out, and adding to a timeline. Setting in out points for a pending source clip saves users time by making sure that unusable media never makes it into the timeline in the first place. In the media pool while scrubbing through the selected clip, use the in key to mark where the clip should start and the out for the end of the portion being used. Hitting the append key will drop just that bit at the end of the timeline and smart insert drops the clip at the nearest edit point to the playhead. This can be done as many times as necessary with a clip by reselecting the in out points or clearing existing in out points entirely by double tapping the keys. You can also use the in-out keys to set render points on your timeline, which is a great function for users who want to use smaller portions of their video separately, which is likely to be useful for users who want to make teasers of their video for TikTok or Instagram. Just make sure the render setting on the deliver page is set to in-out range and not the entire timeline. Move. It can be really frustrating and tedious trying to manually shuffle individual clips around when they're out of order, which is why I love the move function so much. In the cut page, use the search dial to place the playhead over the top of the clip being moved. Then double tap the split key and hold. The selected clip becomes activated and moves around in the timeline without affecting the length of any clips or the timeline as a whole. The other pieces of media will move out of the way and the clip can be dropped anywhere without hassle. Split. Split is one of the most useful keys when trimming media. Instead of using the razor, which forces users to cut each track individually, split slices every clip along the playhead simultaneously. Alternatively, when a single clip is highlighted, the split key will only affect that one clip like the razor tool would. Split can also stitch back together clips which have been cut apart by pressing the command while the playhead is over the edit point. The two clips will rejoin if the source media is consecutive. What makes this even more fundamental for speed editor users is that this key also works in the edit and Fairlight pages. Ripple Delete. Ripple Delete removes the current clip at the playhead, then ripples the timeline to fill the space left by the deleted clip automatically reducing the length of the timeline and eliminating any blank spaces. This can be used to remove parts of shots you don't want. However, in the edit page, using ripple delete doesn't always function the way users expect, occasionally deleting much more than what was intended or awkwardly moving the clips that are left behind. When using ripple delete in the edit page, it's best to manually select clips that need to be removed so that only the intended clips are deleted. Mark. I think organization is incredibly important to keep a smooth workflow, which is why I made a video about creating media folders at the start of a project to keep clips neat. Once that media is on the timeline, there are plenty of opportunities where labeling or marking points, creating references to specific frames, can assist with organization. This is crucial when doing any collaborative work, as it creates a simple form of communication with the partner or team. Double tap the audio levels key to drop a marker. To take it a step further, activating the mark key and holding will open a color palette in the cut page that can be selected from using the search dial. With some consistency, color coding markers can eliminate the need for notes altogether. For example, one color may represent in-out points for b-roll insertion, another for sound effects placement, and another to mark places where an overlay begins and ends. As long as everyone collaborating on the project is aware of what each color means, this cuts down significantly on time, as directions can be communicated at a glance. Reviewing a project. The full screen button is bright red to stand out and switches the viewer to a full screen mode that's great for presenting an edit to clients or just to get a better look at what's been done. By double pressing the full view button, the viewer goes into full screen view and plays from just before the most recent edit. That's it for today. Hopefully this video has helped you get a little more comfortable with a few of the numerous functions of your speed editor 
and helped in establishing an efficient workflow in DaVinci Resolve Studio. As you can see, the speed editor is a powerful tool in a tiny package, which is why we'll have plenty of tutorials in the future. So make sure to subscribe and check out our channel's Resolve playlist to see more content like this. If you liked this video, let us know with a big thumbs up and tell us in the comments what part of the speed editor you want a more in-depth breakdown of in the future. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care of yourself and each other.